So in this video, we're going to review some concepts that we've already touched on in previous videos, but we're going to use some new terminology. And the concept we're going to introduce is called the span of a set of vectors. So let's start by reviewing some of the things that we're very closely related to the notion of span. The first one was we found that the equation, the vector equation, of a line through the origin with direction vector v can be just written as r equals t times v. Now, normally, we would have something like, well, x y z equals x naught comma y naught comma z naught plus t times a b c or in other words vector r equals vector r naught plus t v but since we pass through the origin, the position vector of the origin is just the zero vector. And if I take the zero vector and add it to any other vector, the other vector doesn't change. So that's how we're left with just r equals t times v. Now, t times v, if you just pick a particular value for t, the product tv represents a linear combination of the vector v. Remember that the linear combinations of a single vector are just all the scalar multiples of the vector v. So if you pick any particular value t, you're getting a linear combination of v. Well, the line then through the origin represents all linear combinations of v because this parameter t can be any real number. Or we could look at it from another way. We could say that the vector v generates or spans the line. What do we mean by that? Well, if you know the vector v, you can get to any point on the line by just simply taking a scalar multiple of v, or a linear combination of v. So the linear combinations of v represent every point on the line. We can say something similar about a plane. If you have a plane through the origin, then our r naught vector would be the zero vector, so we can just leave it out. And we're just left with the vector equation r equals s times u plus t times v. Now if I pick particular values for s and t, that represents a linear combination of u and v. If I take s times u plus t times v, that's a linear combination. So we could say that the plane through the origin represents all the linear combinations of u and v. Or turn it around. That the vectors u and v span or generate the plane. What do I mean by generate? It means that any point on the plane can be reached through a linear combination of u and v. Or, more precisely, the position vector of any point on the plane can be written as a linear combination of u and v. So this brings us to the formal definition of span. We talk about the span of a set of vectors, and that is going to 
be yet another set, which is, of course, at least as big as S, but usually much, much larger, larger than S, because it's going to be formed by all possible linear combinations of the vectors in S. In other words, the span of a set of vectors is the set of all vectors that can get generated by linear combinations of those vectors. Again, always keep in mind our two examples, that the span of a single vector is a line, and the span of two vectors is a plane, because what is the set of all linear combinations of two non-parallel vectors? It's a plane passing through the origin. Now we keep saying that it has to be a line through the origin or a plane through the origin, and that's true because the zero vector has to belong to the span of any set. And from our more formal definition, that makes sense, because we can choose our coefficients in the linear combination to be any scalar, including zero. So if I choose them to be all zero, then I just get the sum of one or more zero vectors, which of course is the zero vector. And then another result that we saw previously was that we can generate any vector in Rn as a linear combination of our standard basis vectors. And that's another way of saying that the span of our standard basis vectors is all of Rn. Now, let's look at some of our cases again, geometrically. The span of just the zero vector is really the zero vector or the origin, right? The zero vector is the position vector for the origin, so we just get a single point. We have a non-zero vector, just one non-zero vector, its span is a line through the origin. If I have two non-zero or non-parallel vectors, well, in R2, that's going to generate the entire plane. Well, we saw that in our video on how to add vectors graphically. There, we didn't mention the idea of span. We simply said that, well, if we're given any point in the plane, uh, we can reach that point using a linear combination of the two non-parallel vectors. Or we could say that we can represent the position vector of that point as a linear combination of our two vectors. In R3, if you have two non-parallel vectors, the span of those two vectors is a plane through the origin. Now, there's an important notion of direction in, inherent in the definition of span, because what you're going to do is, uh, when you form a linear combination, is you're just going to change the lengths of the vectors when you multiply them by a scale factor, and then you're going to add them up. And if you already start by pre-scaling the vectors by some other non-zero uh, number, uh, then you really haven't changed their direction. And so uh, you're not going to change the span or the set of vectors that can be generated from those vectors. So a closely related idea is that if you only have two vectors and they point in the same direction, uh, then uh, any linear combination of those two vectors is still going to be parallel to those vectors, right? And I have to be careful. I really shouldn't ha say point in the same direction. I should just say parallel, because they could be pointing in opposite direction. But if they are multiples of each other and then you form a linear combination, the resulting linear combination is still going to be uh, parallel to the, each of those vectors. 
or think of it in terms of R3. If you have a line that passes through the origin and u and v are simply two direction vectors for that same line, then if you take a linear combination, you're going to get another possible direction vector because u and v were both parallel to the line to begin with. So let's look at an example we've seen before. If you're given two vectors which are not parallel to each other in R3, and we look at the span, well, it's the set of all linear combinations. In other words, if we, the w vector belongs to the span of u and v, we can write this vector equation. Well, what is this vector equation? This vector equation is exactly the vector equation of the plane passing through the origin containing the vectors u and v. So, quick review, we could write that as parametric equations. And we know we can eliminate the parameters to get a Cartesian equation, which only has x, y, and z. And of course, it has to equal 0 because it has to pass through the origin. In other words, x equals 0, y equals 0, and z equals 0 has to satisfy this particular equation. All right, we've mentioned this a couple of times before, that if you have two non-parallel vectors in R2, uh, you can generate any position vector in R2. In other words, what we saw when we were adding graphically is that if you're given any point in the xy plane, you can reach it by taking a multiple of u and adding a multiple of v. Well, that's exactly saying that, oh, uh, any position vector is in the span of u and v. So that's exactly right. If you take any w, w is written as a multiple of s times u plus a different multiple uh, t times v. And we have a similar notion in R3. Non-coplanar means we're not in the same plane. So if we look at u and v, uh, if they determine a plane, then w is not in that plane. w sticks out of that plane even a little bit, but it just is not contained entirely in the plane. And if that's the case, then um, you can generate every vector in R3 from those three vectors. So let's end with a very common question. If we're given a set of vectors, like here we have a v1 and a v2, all of the vectors are in R4, and then we'd like to ask, well, what about this vector w and this vector u? Do those vectors, does either one of them or both of them, belong to the span of the set v1 and v2? Well, let's start with w. If w belongs to the span of v1 and v2, it has to be a linear combination of v1 and v2, so we can find coefficients c1 and c2 such that the linear combination c1 v1 plus c2 v2 gives us the w vector. In other words, we can generate w from a linear combination of v1 and v2. Well, let's go ahead and put in the components for those vectors. And then from that vector equation, we can get a system of equation. Now this particular system uh, is going to be rather easy to uh, attempt to solve because of the second equation. And from the second equation, we know that c2 has to equal 5. Now, given c2 equals 5, I can choose any of the other equations to try to solve for c1. 
I use the first equation. If I substitute C2 equals 5 into the first equation, I find that C1 has to equal negative 3. Now I'm not done, because in order for this to be a solution to our original vector equation, then it's going to have to be a valid solution for all four of the equations in the system. So we'll check in equation 3, and sure enough, it satisfies equation 3, and also s equation 4. When I substitute c1 equals negative 3, and c2 equals 5 into the fourth equation, I get a true statement. So my conclusion is that, yes, w does belong to the span of the set v1, v2. All right, well, let's repeat the analysis for vector u. If u belongs to the span of v1 and v2, then it must be a linear combination of v1 and v2. So I'll find, or I'll attempt to find, two coefficients, c1 and c2, such that the linear combination, c1 times v1 plus c2 times v2, is going to give me the u vector. So go ahead and put in the components for each one of those vectors, which will give us another system of equations. Again, because we're using the same v vectors v1 and v2, my second equation is simple to solve for c2, and tells us that c2 has to equal negative 3. Now, c1, I can find again from substituting into any equation, 1, 3, or 4, but I'm going to substitute it into the first equation, and which would give me c1 equals 2. And again, I can't stop here. I don't know if this is a solution to the vector equation, unless it satisfies all four of my equations in the system. And there's a problem, because if I try to substitute c1 equals 2, and c2 equals 3 in the third equation, I don't get a true statement. I get a contradiction. On the left-hand side, I get positive 4, and on the right-hand side, I get negative 4. And so what does that tell me? It tells me that uh, the vector u does not belong to the span of v1 and v2. That is, the vector u cannot be generated by any linear combination of v1 and v2. Well, I hope that this video was useful for you. I know that span can be a difficult concept to grasp, but if you bear in mind that span is just restating some familiar concepts in a different way, then I hope that throughout the course you begin to get a firm grasp on the concept of the span of a set of vectors.